From the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel, it's the 2023 International Open. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. This event is a Pat Fleming production. It's sanctioned by the WPA, and it's being brought to you by Accustats. As always, when we're here at the International, we're joined by our three signature sponsors to provide the official equipment for the event. That's Diamond Billiard Products, Simonis Cloth, and Aramith Pool Balls. And we'd like to tell them how much we appreciate their long support of this event along with Professional Pool. And also, we want to thank Outsville for once again providing the official racking template for both 10 ball and 9 ball. Thank you, Chris. Lastly, before we introduce the players, we got one more thank you, and that's to all of you. Whether you're out there watching at home or you're here in person, we appreciate the support that you've given AccuStats in this event for so many years. And ladies and gentlemen, you are the most important part of the International Open. So thank you very much. Okay, we're continuing in our first round of 10 ball. Uh, we have, I think, uh, three more matches to complete the first round, and then we'll have a couple of quarterfinals for you later in the day. So let's get right to it and introduce first from Canada. He's a world nine ball champion. He's a US Open nine ball champion. And in 2019, his stellar career was recognized by the BCA with his induction into the Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, sponsored by the Paggy Lion brand, it's the lion, Alex Paggy Lion. Thank you, his opponent's from Germany. He too is a world nine ball champion. He too is a US Open nine ball champion. And he's not quite to the Hall of Fame, but he's on the way. Sponsored by Predator and by How Tips, it's the killer, Joshua Filler. Good luck, gentlemen. Your official timekeeper is Miss Dorothy Potke. I'm gonna send it up to the booth now to Mark Wilson and Kim Davenport. Take it away. Welcome everybody to World Class Pool presented by AccuStats. My name is Mark Wilson and joining me is Hall of Famer, Kim Davenport, here to provide professional analysis. Kim, what can we look for in this match? Well, I, I believe this is gonna be Maybe the best match of the tournament so far, these two great players. I look for both of them to really come out and play well. I, I, you know, a few matches that I've done with you and Mike, uh, they just seem to uh, not quite get into gear on their first match. But I think these two players are ready. Uh, I look for some great pull to happen here, and uh, they're both great players. Paggy Lion would have the edge in the tactical side of the game. Shot making has to go to Filler. Super straight shooter, one of the straightest ever. And uh, I always thought Jason Shaw was the best, but Shaw assures me that Filler shoots straighter. I don't believe it, but this is a humble approach, but nonetheless, super straight shooting. Right, and I like his nickname. <laughs> yeah. Huh? It's intimidating for sure. Killer, the killer, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's pretty good. He he would have liked to have got a little better on this ball. He's, you know, the cue ball, players never like their cue ball to be close to the rail. So he elected to play safe. Yeah, he didn't want to take one shot that was a little bit errant and then support it with another bad shot. Right, you know, right. So you got the wrong position, just uh, don't give away games early. Okay, Alex is just looking to get separation here. He just like he would like to get the cue ball on one side of the table and the uh, two on the other. I, I looked for him to hit this uh, with a pretty firm stroke. Well, that's uncharacteristic there. It, based on the fact that he skimmed by it, it looks like he was trying to back cut the two and then let the cue ball come back down in the clutter, and he just uh, right. misjudged right. it slightly. So he wasn't just going right at it. He could have hit it easily, but he was trying to make a shot out of it. Looks like we have a slight problem here. He's looking. He would like to have his cue ball to be right there, and now it's what it looks like. So uh, he's going to have to just draw it back a little bit and uh, shoot the three ball back down here. I don't think he's even going to mess with trying to break it out. I think he uh, is just going to try to get pinpoint position here. He only has a, maybe a two-inch circle he can get in to where he'll have uh, good position. And then he has to 
make sure and get down for the four. But you're saying that rather than break it out, he's playing position to play safe on the three. Is that no, correct? I think no. I, oh, you think I, I think out. he's going to play the three back over here is what he was looking at back in the uh, bottom oh. corner. But evidently not. It if doesn't really like on that. the overhead. Doesn't look like it necessarily. I goes think he's going to do it. that. I think he's just going to scoot up. Yeah. Now shoot the three straight in, basically, and it looks like he doesn't like the angle because <laughs> yeah. he has to. He has to get right in between the six and the five. Is what he's looking at. So yeah, he's shaking his head already. <laughs> Players like it to, to be not difficult. They, right. they want everything to be just boom, boom, straight you, in. Your first ball after ball in hand. <laughs> if you got a struggle, then something went awry. There. You don't want to hit the seven. Right? He did. He got away with well, it. Well, he could shot. He could have easily seven. stopped there and behind the five so he looks to be in good shape right now he had to take a little chance and tickle that cue ball forward and, mm -hmm. and like how you hit the pocket determines how much the cue ball slows down whether you get a shot or not right. but it was well executed and nice thought with these great players like Peggy Lyon, you don't want to spend a lot of time playing safety with them because they're so good at kicking and hitting it and then 20 percent of the time they get an accidental backdoor safety out mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll enjoy watching Filler play because he does not waste time. When he gets yeah. to the table, things get done. Yeah, I, I, I like a good fast pace for, for the players to play. Sometimes, you, you know, if you, you think long, you think wrong, you know. So just get up out there and your, uh, your first instinct and just go. Now, sometimes you can get in a little trouble doing that. You'll, you'll miss a shot during a match that you should, normally wouldn't have missed. But your opponent's sitting there like, you know, okay, that took 10 seconds to run, you know, 10 balls. Yeah. Well, you know, another aspect, too, is that sometimes you might miss one, but also sometimes you might make some that you would overthink or get worried about or second-guess yourself, too. Mm -hmm. So it's got both sides of that. Quickly, it's 1-0. Yeah, well, Alex Alex was in a tough spot there. I mean, he should have hit the two ball. He, he, I mean, he had a clear path to it, but... Uh, I think he was trying to get too perfect, so uh -huh. mistake one. You can't fault him for wanting to do a lot because of the firepower of Filler. He knows he needs to defang him, mm -hmm. and if he, uh, but but maybe he could have gone in there heavy and just taken his chances that they turn out. He was trying to be really cute here in the first shot of the match, so make it perfect. And I've always thought that the first and the last game were the two toughest games to win. You win that first game, and it just takes the, the jitters are gone. You know your your right. three game nerves. You know because everybody, it doesn't matter who you are. I don't. It doesn't matter. You, you, your nerves when you mm -hmm. when you play the first game and start the start of the tournament. You you know you have nerves. That's just the way it is. If you don't, you shouldn't be playing. Well, if if you're not nervous, you don't care enough. It's, it has nothing to do with what your fear of losing. It has nothing to do with that. It's that you don't know the distribution of the balls throughout the match and if you're going to get enough turns to have a chance to win. And so when you care, of course, you put your whole heart into it. Mm -hmm. It stings when you lose. All right. He's deciding on where to break from. Okay. I haven't seen too many players break off the rail like this, but I, I used to like to break off the rail. For 10 ball, this is unusual. I always thought you could hit him a little harder breaking off the rail. He cut break those balls, and I think that might be the last time he will cut break them. <laughs> 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 and and yeah. the ball didn't even come close to going in. I think you might be right. I don't think he's going to go to that spot anymore. <laughs> I don't think the one pass is marked, so it looks like he might have to. He, I don't think he'll play a combination, but he's going to have to uh, play some kind of safety, I do believe. And another ugly circumstance to play safe from, too. Because mm -hmm. you have to move both the cue ball and the object ball with control, and that, that triples the difficulty. Might shoot the one down the end rail here and try to get behind the two. Good call. How's his speed? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Not great. Not but that's it, you, when you move the both balls that far. No matter your skill set, it's right. dangerous. Yeah, here we go. He's gonna just snip the one and go up and get behind the five and the nine. That's what he was looking at. Or he's gonna try to get behind the ten and put the one up there. Or he's gonna bank the ball. He's right. thinking that's a free yeah. bank, maybe. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot right wow. there. Wow! Wow! I guess he weighed his options and then uh, figured that was the best route to go. And you could see he had a real chance to be safe if he missed it, too, and he had a chance to maybe go out and run the, run the table.
this is one inning ten ball, and that means when the uh, first player gets a good offensive shot, they clean up the table pretty often. How do you do here? Not great. No. Well, he just made it one heck of a bank, so this should be a hanger <laughs> after that first bank he made. Well, it's a little off angle, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And it does come with a, uh, a good value if you make this ball. Yeah. And he could get safe here, too, if he plays it and sends the cue ball down. If he misses it, he could hide behind the uh, five and the nine. Well, he's overcut it. He's. I think he played that. I do, too. I think he played that yeah. safety, I, yeah. I'm inclined to agree. Wow. Based on where the cue ball went, that was by design. That wasn't by random yeah. chance. That it landed I mean, the there. five and the nine for sure, but I didn't. I didn't see the four ball getting behind there. Very nice. Now you got to warp this in here to get three rails. You got to. You got to go past the side pocket. He just needs to bend hit, it. He needs to hit this ball. Bending it. Oh no. my! That yeah. was the. That was a very reasonable try there. Mm -hmm. Well, the only really problem, and I and I say problem, is you know getting to the uh, six ball from the five. I think the three and the four is right there, and then you know mm -hmm. I think he'll play the five in the side and go three rails in between the eight and the ten. But every player is different, so uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens here. Fell just a little bit flat on that one. Now he's going to have to draw that back up out of there. And now your accuracy and position play right. goes down the hill. Yeah, he needed to be another foot down table. He'll just draw it straight back, I think. Or maybe use the rail, but just he'll put a good stroke on it. Ah, miss hit it. Miss hit it. I don't know if he got away with it or not. Uh, I think he did. I think the five will go. I mean, well, I'm not positive. And he's not going to be able to get close to the six. He's going to have to cut that six in, right? Can he, can can he, he spin get it underneath there? the nine, maybe snip the nine, and then, uh, you know, go down table? Yeah. You were right. Very good. You were right, yeah. He is fast and loose. I don't know if he's just going to kill it, I think. Just slow roll it. Mm-hmm. Very good. Two rails, I would think. Always like using the rails. I could always judge my cue ball coming off the, the rails instead of just rolling it and, and, and making the ball roll up. I could always judge the speed a little better coming off the rails. When Filler first burst on the scene, he was probably about like 18. And uh, Ralph Suke, he told me, oh, no, this could be the best German player ever, blah, blah, blah. And you always hear that, so I was skeptical. But here we are six, seven years later. Boy, maybe he is the best German player ever. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, that we have about 10 years before that'll, that'll really, we'll really know because uh, Oliver and Ralph had great careers. Yeah, right. He's definitely on pace. And he is fast and he is loose. He's kind of a funny guy and he... He wasn't trying to be funny, but it struck me really funny. He was telling this guy that at home, the guy says, how do you train? Like he's going to get the secret to shot making, you <laughs> yeah, know. Right. And, and uh, he's real serious. Uh, so uh, Josh says, uh, well, I have a four-inch table, and uh, I try to run 200 balls straight pool every day. And the guy goes, oh, oh, <laughs> how often do you do that? And Josh looks at him real serious. He goes, Every day. <laughs> like, he just runs 200 every day on that tough table. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, I'd say. That pretty much sums it up right there. Well, the only thing in Alex's favor is it's his break. Two zeros are a score, early stages. Fill her a couple nice run outs. You know, when you do that to a player when you're playing and, and uh, the other player kind of, you know, made a couple of mistakes and you haven't made a mistake and you're, you're running all the balls, the, the player knows. He said, you know, this is for real. I have to get going. You know? Yeah. 
I, I mean, I think panic's out of the question for Alex right now, but still, he, he knows that uh, he has to start playing a little better. Well, there's Alex going off the side rail. Did not hit him particularly good. The cue ball dripped forward and just opened him up. But uh, dry break. It'll be interesting to see how he can get on the three ball from here. That huh? will not be easy. No, I don't think so. He could. If he gets absolutely right dead center of the table, kind of where he can... Uh, he just cut it back into the a corner. He he might take that because the four is just hanging. I see what you're saying. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Where yeah. He'll just cut it back where the eight and the six is, and then the cue ball will go down table. But it doesn't matter position. The four is right there. I don't know. I don't see a lot of things happening here. He's going to go shoot it in the other corner. Better get good position. That's pretty nice. But the cue ball again. Close to the rail. Players do not like that. He has a seven ball down there where he can use. So the pocket's really twice as big. He has to be uh, committed to the shot, though, because he's a little bit worried about if he rubs that five ball, is, that, is he going to be clear? But when you shoot this ball, you have to be totally committed to pocketing the three. He would like to miss, just hit the nine. He would like to miss that five because he could get snookered here. But if he hit the nine, then you have to use a little pace. Uh, to move the nine so the cue ball gets free of the five, too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or is that the four right now? No, that's the five. That's right the five, yeah. So the choice is hit downward or to go top spin. Oh, wow. He's going downward. Yeah. Well, he's going to play half half safe, too. And just in case he misses, the cue ball is going to go behind the five and the nine. Wow. Oh, what, a shot. what a shot. Mm -hmm. What a shot. He's smiling. Uh, I don't he, blame him for smiling there he, after he, making a shot like that. Well, he, he made it look pretty simple, but he knows he got past a big uh, test there. He'd like to have gotten a little better. He might just bump the 10 ball here. Don't like running into balls. Players don't, but... Uh, No, oh, bump the nine. Okay. Well, he's in total command, Mark. Yeah, I think he's playing a thousand right now, isn't he? <laughs> Just about. Well, maybe a thousand and one, if that's <laughs> yeah. possible. Yeah, he hasn't made any mistakes. Just slide the cue ball down, come up by the side pocket down there somewhere, get him a little angle for the nine. And this is what happens when you get off to a good start, then you get some momentum on your side, and then you start to feel like, hey, this is my match, and you tend to play better just because of the psychological aspect of your comfort. Oh, yeah. And like I had mentioned just earlier, that the other player is just sitting there, and he knows. It's just, man, I have to make something happen. Yeah, so our score is 3-0. I don't remember Alex even pocketing a ball yet. Uh, no, he's missed two kicks. Great. We're going to get a second look at this uh, Premier Billiards replay where Filler had to elevate to manipulate the cue ball. Here it is. Look yeah, now here I, I thought he could use, he could use the seven, but he didn't need the seven. He just said, "I'm going to just shoot it straight in the <laughs> pocket." That's that's good stuff right there. Nice smile on his face. I had a hard time. I mean, I did smile, I guess, every once in a while, but I was always so like, eh, you know what I mean trying to have that game face on that it's yeah. just tough to. And some players are different, you know what I mean. I mean, I've seen some of the players, the Filipino players, a lot of them will smile and, you know, and laugh and giggle. I remember well, Efren, every time Efren would make a mistake, I mean, and it wasn't too often, he, he, he would scratch his head and smile. Yeah. We're informed that Filler did have a position error, but uh, I didn't recall that, nevertheless. Other than that, perfect. Yeah. He had to play safe because he got out of line. That's a position error. Well, you see, he's, he's not breaking from the side. He learned his lesson <laughs> yeah. just one time. He didn't hit him great. No, there. they're not hitting him square. 
the, the, you know, the, the matches we watched yesterday, the players were popping the cue ball and hitting them straight on, and balls were going in pretty good. Again, uh, Alex is at the table. If he can get on the three ball, uh, he has a very good shot of uh, getting on the board here. I would think his first option would be three in the side. And I would think that uh, his nerves, he hasn't settled his nerves yet. That, that's missing that shot is nothing but nerves. All right, well, let's see what uh, the killer has here. I always take a look at the three into the ten into the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those of us have trouble running all ten balls. We take a look and make sure that angle is in there because that four is tangled up too. That's not. Yeah, he's he, well. He's looking like he's looking like he wants to break him up, but I, I think I think it'll go on the side the four. I mean, he needs to get. Yeah, there you go. I like this. What he's pointing at, and that way he don't have to interrupt any balls or yeah. touch any balls. And then the five's hanging in the corner down there. So yeah. That would require good speed control on this shot right here. If he gets he perfect did. care, uh, this this Boy. rack is over the way he's going. Wow. He'd That's like good to, speed control yeah, there. He would like to roll a little farther. I think he's going to have to maybe draw his cue ball out. I don't think he can kill it. I think I, think I would just draw, you know, into the in rail there and, and then back out. That's what I think I would do, but let's see. You're taking a chance if you just try to kill it and stun it because it's, it, he has a pretty good cut on it. These players nowadays, they can really do that. There you go. That's what I liked right there. Now he's all, all set again. <laughs> you know, when you think of left-handed players, you got Shaw, Feller, Mike Siegel, Thomas Inger. Uh, Miserac. I mean, they're always smooth on that transition from backswing to forceswing. All of them. I don't know why they're more so than right-handers, and maybe there's so many more right-handers that just looks that way, but it just seems like, boy, these guys are accurate and smooth. Well, it just seems, in every sport, too, it just seems like they're, the left-handers kind of just stand out a little more. You know I mean? You see yeah. Colfax, you know what I mean? Well, the, you know, another good example, and I don't know what I'm looking at, but when I watch Phil Mickelson hit a golf mm -hmm. ball, it just looks to me like, yeah, how's this guy ever miss? I mean, he's just going to yeah. lay it right up there by the hole every time. Right. Well, he's, I, th I think he's just going to draw it back in between the 10 and the 8. Oh, maybe oh, that's he, what he, did got he get lucky there. here. Yeah, did he get he, lucky or no? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. my. I wonder why he didn't. Yeah, oh, I thought well. you were right. He only had to move it three inches. Yeah. It was a very comfortable play, but he was trying to do something bigger. And when you hit the pocket, how you hit the pocket with that much power, if you're just a micron off, it's amplified by that. You know, you're, it's not like the cue ball's barely off. So you're going to send the five up table. Boy, a nice kick and stick from that yeah. two railer. And it looks like he's going to get the five. No, I think the five will go past the seven, but Alex is down three to nothing. This is not no easy shot coming mm -hmm. to the table. Plus position play here. You have to you have to make the ball and get position on the six. It's a mighty tall feat for him right here. And you know, here's a guy that has a maximum on a six by twelve, maybe two of them. So long shots can't possibly bother him. But psychologically, when you're down three to nothing, that shot becomes far more. Uh, Missable, right? And it can really damage your psyche too. The converse is, if you make it, boy, that really does a lot for your. Yeah, missed it by a good bit. Yeah, he. It looked like he moved on the ball too, right? He when does. He yeah, no, he's been flinching yeah. a little bit the last yeah. few years. All right, fillers. Probably tickled to death that he's getting back to the table after he snookered himself. Watch out for the scratch in the side. No, he made sure and spun it <laughs> enough. <laughs> You're gonna have to get your warnings out a little sooner <laughs> if you, you uh, want, want him to pay heed because yeah. he doesn't waste time over the ball. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he'll just draw it over for the seven to the uh, rail there, side rail.
It is pretty to watch, though, someone that's mm-hmm. got command like this. Yes, it is. And Alex, too, is always a fan favorite because of his interaction with the crowd, this cheerful disposition. I mean, every fan loves Alex Pagulian. Yeah. Yes, they do. As well they should. He truly makes the sport better just by his presence. Well, this man is playing robotic right now, is all I know. <laughs> yes, this is not an uncommon uh, performance by him either. And Four this, zero. Yeah, and this is a five by ten, by the way. This isn't a regulation table. This is oversized. So, uh, well, I'm you, thoroughly impressed. Do you, do you think he knows that, though? He's not acting. I, probably not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He just he, 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 he knows goal, there's right? six pockets out there. <laughs> and, you know, he knows he has to shoot one through ten. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's probably all he's thinking about right now. Yeah, there it is. 40 balls at zero. That tells the tale. Two errors for Filler, both on position errors. 9.52. Man, yeah. that gets it. That really does. And Alex made has made five errors there, so, you know, that, that just compounds things. But his error, like that long straight in, I mean, that's missable by anybody. That, you yeah. know, just but, but that's why I'm saying when you're down, it's like you've absorbed a bunch of body blows, and now it takes a little wind out of you. Yes, it does. I don't believe either player has made a ball in the break. I could be wrong, but... Uh, Let's see. I don't recall it either. I don't recall. Now don't he's going so. over to the side. It's going to have to hit him harder, I think, if you're going to send the cue ball straight back. You know, he's cut. Oh, they're him. playing the one on the side. That's why. That's why I got well, you. There's no spread, though. Look, you know, you don't get any spread when you do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, we're going to see a rollout here. And the three ball is weird on the nine down here, so there's going to have to be some. Position play to yeah. deal with or safety play we're going to see later in the rack. Yeah, and the two is there, so there's a possibility to uh, make the two and break the three nine out if need be. Yeah, he pushed the ten ball down to the rail, partly to get the cue ball down here, but mainly to get that yeah. ten so there's not a two ten combination. Yeah, I don't blame him for giving this back to him because it looks like if he makes the ball in either corner, he would scratch. So he's going to try to play some kind of safety here, maybe. Thin it real thin and send the cue ball back by the 10. I was thinking put the one over by the 7. No, he was playing the shot, scratch, mm-hmm. miss hit it. Oh, boy. Yeah, there just wasn't enough win in that shot. You know, you could lose with that shot, but you weren't going to win the game with that shot. Correct. That speed, you were going to be a long ways away and you're going to have the wrong angle on the – you're ultimately going to have to play safe on the three ball from where he was going to be. And if he hits it fuller, you know, he doesn't scratch. But when he overcut it, that's what caused a scratch. But even if he hits it and pockets it, the cue ball is never getting close to the two, nor on angle. See if he's going to play for the breakout here. Yep. Very nice. He don't want to hit the three too full here. He'd like to hit it kind of thin, and then cue ball come back and hit the five. and Just kind of stop it. Everything stays there. What a shot that mm-hmm. was. Oh, man. That's straight pull knowledge there. It was to get good position on the ball up by the side. Should be straight in. Shoot the ball down in the corner, and everything seems to be in good order. You know, when you're playing good, good things happen to you also. You know, when you're playing mm-hmm. bad, it just seems like you mm-hmm. cannot get a roll, you know. No, so it really gets tough. Wants to draw it back enough to where you don't have to go two rails for position so he can just make the six and draw it back and get an angle for the combination. There he goes, perfect. Have to keep an angle here because if you get straight in, you could you could snook your not snook yourself, but uh, you could get where the seven could float over. Now it doesn't matter. Right, great point. Yeah, now it doesn't matter. This he's, is the proper fine. angle to play the combination Correct. rather than get straight on because straight on you can get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Here, if you make it, you can't get in trouble with getting position on the seven. There you go. Yeah, total command now. 
Yeah, the whole match started off wrong for Pally Lyon because he tried to play that safety on that eight ball or on the one ball uh, on the push or was it the push? Yeah, push out. Uh -huh. And remember, he tried to go rail first and miss hit it, right. gave up ball in hand, and then you know, things have not gotten better since then. And so when he, you say he has five errors, the errors, it was that long straight in shot. He miss hit a kick, uh, trying to play a kick safety. Yeah, and, and, and I always thought as a player when I was playing that, you know, you just cannot make like two mistakes in a row. You know, you, you're, you're going to make some mistakes. This is going to happen. But you, you can't make like two in a row, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, this match is starting to get out of hand. I'm afraid if Alex doesn't start doing something very soon that uh, it's going to be hopeless for him, actually. I mean, he's still in the match, but mm -hmm. uh, he is really, a, uh, he is really a, a big underdog from here, especially when you're alternating break. He can't put no racks together. And, and the worst thing is, especially when your opponent does not miss, <laughs> you know, yeah. that really makes it tough. I would say that's probably the, the, <laughs> the biggest problem. The number one has, killer yeah. is the other guy doesn't miss. Hit him hard if you want to make a ball hard. There. There. Oh, the he two. got a little unlucky that two didn't go, but at least he had some kind of chance. Yeah. I like that hitting him hard like that. Well, the other thing wasn't working either, so... Yeah, they're not breaking the balls too good, but uh, yeah, it's not easy. You get him awful square. Uh, I think Behind Alex the 10? Yeah, I think down to the 9 and he coming down. Yeah. No? Oh, oh he, look at this. What the heck? He was all out to yeah. score the ball. Yeah, I, I think he's figuring that, hey, he has to just go ahead and shoot and make everything. I mean, the 2 will go down in the corner, but I, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't see him shooting it. He might. Since the three's over there. No. Nope. By golly, that's pretty good. Yes, it is. Yeah. Can't fault him on that effort. Well, the, the, kicking this ball shouldn't be a problem. He'll just go to the bottom rail, and whether he chooses to go straight into it or use the side rail. If he uses the side rail, he has to be wary about uh, the cue ball coming off the two and scratching. If you go one rail, there's a chance to make it, but there's also mm -hmm. a greater, greater chance to scratch. If you mm -hmm. go two rails, there's, you're for sure going to hit it, and you can't score it, but you might leak the cue ball up on the three if you go soft speed. I have to think he's going to go one rail here. I, I could be wrong, but uh, I just don't like going underneath it because your chances of... Uh, your chances of scratching is pretty good. Okay, very good. Well, Alex is at the table again, but, and he has a shot, but everything's like a puzzle for him right now. The three and the eight's tied up. I mean, he could bank the three ball, I guess, uh, cross side. It looks like that might be on. Or he could play safe. I, I, I think he's going to have to start a little more offense, uh, get himself rolling, because he needs to make some balls and get in the rhythm. Yeah, everything is ugly, though. You have to go into the eight ball here, and you hold it, and now you're off angle on the four. But I think if he makes the bank, he'll be all right. I think the cue ball, the eight will slow the cue down. Yeah, good shot. Well, this whole rack depends on this one shot on the four ball, and he's elevated a little bit. Very good. Put a nice stroke on that. That was a good shot. Mm -hmm. Might have stroked it just a little too much. Look at the angle. I don't know if he can slide down for the six. I know he don't want to stop it right there and shoot the six. There might be just yeah. a hint of an angle yeah, if you it pop looks, it. It looks like he's just going to force it down, like you said, hard. Yeah, good shot. Well, he was able to get a lot out of that. Nice shot. 
you notice he had a lot of spin on there, so he hit the ball full and threw it in the hole and let, let, let the cue ball come down a, a little easier mm -hmm. from that angle. He's been looking at this eight. He's looked at it three times. Now he's closing one eye and looking at it, so that's, that's, that's in the back of his mind there. Yeah. Usually what I found out when, when it's like that, see, I, I think that I don't think that's where he wanted to be. When a ball, you look at the ball like that and, and you're looking at it, I always found that that ball will go because you can catch the outside rim of the pocket. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe not here on these, these pockets because they're so tight, but I always found that it, if it looks close, the ball will go. Yeah, there's a hint more room than you can see for sure. Uh -huh. But now look where he's uh, yeah, got he the cue ball. Uh, if he thin cuts this, then it's going to be an awkward stretch and reach to get the eight for him to a half a pocket at best. I think he might try to run into the eight, to be honest Running with into you. the eight or I going mean, underneath the I eight. I think he might. He just might. He's banking this ball. He might bank it. He's banking this ball. Oh. Mm-mm-mm. Well, it's just it's it's difficult to get going. It's difficult to get that first game, and uh, I feel for him. I know what it's like sitting in that chair like that. Well, I guess we'll soon find out if that eight goes or not. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> The killer didn't want nothing to do with it. Evidently, he didn't want to take a chance on shooting that eight in there with the nine. So, And he didn't want to have to really struggle to, to get position with a tough, thin cut like that. He just thought he'd just take what he gets out of it, knowing the cue ball is likely to bump the eight there. Look how smooth that was. Did he hold it? He did. Mm -hmm. Held the line just enough. Two cushion position now. Side rail, side rail. Wow. I know one thing. This guy can't walk on water, but he knows where all the stones are. <laughs> kind of like one time Keith McCready, he looked over to see if a ball was frozen. He looked over his opponent and goes, well, they ain't married, but they're living together. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. I, I always like to watch him. Golly, he was fun. He was hilarious. Miss him. He had a personality that just, you know, exuded the, to the crowd where mm -hmm. the, the, he was engaging like Alex Paguline. 964, not half bad. Only two errors. And yeah, they that were is position pretty good, errors. isn't it? 964, yeah. my God, on a 5 by 10 Mm-hmm. <laughs> very nice. You will not lose very many sets if you shoot 964. Well, on any table. On any table. Against any opponent. Alex has his eyes closed there. He's kind of he's kind of in shock a little bit, I would think, you know, that it's like all of a sudden six nothing and the match just started twenty minutes ago, so it's like all right. If you were his coach, what would you say to him? What right would you now? Say to Alex, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty difficult to say. I mean, you know, you, I think the you, main thing clear your head you know let's start the match from right now forget what's happened we're starting yeah. from right now what are you going to do in this rack yeah i mean uh, you know you know confidence you know uh, that's that's what you need and if you're playing well you have confidence and he's not playing well so uh, he just has to it, he, it's his internal with him right now he has to figure it out himself i don't think you know he might get some good words of wisdom from a coach or something but i think this is all in, on him right now Mm -hmm. He has to he has to work it out and figure it out himself. So, you know, but letting go of what's happened is what I'm really saying. Oh, you know, yeah, let's just yeah, start yeah. the match from right here. We'll just yeah. play it out. The other guy's playing good. We're not worried about that. But yeah. Let's let's do something for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can't uh, you can't master this game unless you have a short memory, unless you can you know mm -hmm. just let the the yeah. one bad shot or, or or one bad game affect the way the way you yeah. play the rest of the match. You have to just let that go. Pool players have a short memory. They're great players. I mean, you have to. No, you don't have a choice. Well, plus he's going to be playing two or three more times today anyway. Mm -hmm. So slide down for the three, just one rail and come off. 
I'll tell you, this would be a great start if he could get a nice clean run out here. Mm -hmm. Get yourself back in the match. He got weird. Yeah. He got funny. just a little funny angle here. Yeah. You may have to. Well, I don't even know if he can draw. Yes, yeah, you, you can't really go a long ways. You're just going to pull it back a foot. Right. And the six, uh, with all those blockers, it's not it's no. just automatic to get position on that six ball, you know. Especially you, not from here. If you yeah. could have had a different angle on the five, it wouldn't have been so bad. Yeah, you have the eight and the nine there, so. Yeah, he's going to have to hit a good ball here. You don't want to want it run into anything, but he might not. He might he's not have no choice. Two cushions right at the eight. He might not have no choice here. Right at the eight. Don't want to run into it. Okay, yeah. well. He earned that. Yeah. That was all yeah, by design. Was... He knows there's some risk to it, but that was the easiest way to possibly get a good position. Good decision and good execution. The other part of it, too, for Pagulion is that if the other guy can carry on 964, hey, don't worry about it because nobody was going to beat him anyway. Right. But it's pretty hard to maintain that pace of two errors and 54 balls pocketed. I'll be damned. Yeah. I just have to well, prove it to me. The, the great player in him, you know, he, he's he's not given up yet. You know, that's the thing. He, 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 he know he's, he's come back from, you know, this step is exactly. four, so he's he's fighting In, internally. He's fighting. He has not given up. Sometimes you have to win ugly. You don't get to win pretty every mm -hmm. time. No, you know, that, exactly. that, that naturally, Josh is winning pretty, but this is going to be you know, a bloody thing for Pagulian to win. Wants to get good position here. He don't want to have no difficult shot on this to win his first game. So that's pretty good right there. If anyone could do it, this would be the guy that could do mm -hmm. it too. He's a tough customer. That was a solid run out. Well, you notice for you folks at home that uh, he shot that ball instead of just shooting it and rolling the ball to the rail and rolling, and he he liked to fire it in with two rails come off the cushion. That just gives you a little mm -hmm. lower English, and you know the, the players, all all players, even in the generations back in you know early 1900s, you know two rails, two rails, spin it in with low. Yeah, especially playing the rotation games. That you know. Now, do you go back to the early 1900s? Yeah, I was back then. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was back there anyway. Kip and I are the same age. Uh, <laughs> Dinosaurs had just gone extinct. Oh, my. That point. <laughs> we used to play with rocks on the table for balls. Yeah. Fred Flintstone. I seen him break the balls, Fred, one time. <laughs> on the Flintstones, he made all 15 of them. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> Poor Barney. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, if you can claw back a game or two and then say filler misses an out that he's supposed to get and then maybe you catch another game, now the dynamic shifts a little bit. Like, man, this guy hasn't quit yet. I gave him my best yeah, flurry. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, a little I don't, bit. I, I don't right. think, no. See if he hits him as hard as he did the last time. I like the way he broke him the speed last time. Okay. They are just having problems. But he still didn't catch him square. The cue ball nope. was darting to the side he, rail. He did not. He didn't hit him like you said. Hit him square. Pagulian nope. took quite a bit off his last break and, and did pocket balls with a square hit. Right. Well, once again, you come to the table with an awkward arrangement here. Uh, he's going to send the one back down table. Maybe try to get behind the seven ball there. Yeah, the seven and gonna... the three can block. You just don't want to shoot it real hard. Oh, he's not hit he it. He caught it well. thick. Yeah. He was trying to go underneath to get underneath that seven. It wasn't a, you know, a terrible outcome. It was not just a, you know, assured that Filler's going to make this at all. Get position. 
Yeah, I don't know where he, well, he, I don't know if he has a pocket. He's looking at him. I think he has to play safe here, doesn't he? Maybe, maybe just send the one ball behind the four and try to get the cue ball behind the ten. Maybe something like that. Or, or he rel- might be able to roll it and let the cue ball come down by the two and just accept that you're probably going to miss it, but you're mm-hmm. not going to give anything away in this fashion. Uh, yeah, I guess he figured go ahead and shoot at it. He overcut it, so the ball would have went. As well as he's playing, I mean, you know, I, I don't blame him for shooting at that ball. Shoot, are you kidding? And he didn't he hasn't that missed much anything, up. has he? I mean, no, no, that was the first open miss yeah. he's had, and that's not even an easy one. So, yeah, tough get, and he just figured that there's a good chance it comes out okay. And Peggy Lyon's still going to have to make a big shot here to get started. Into the side. Yeah, if he makes this, he should be uh, okay. Right. The three sevens down there are a little difficult, but nice hit. So he's looking at going around the four and billiarding into the three and try to uh, manipulate something open here. Mm-hmm. I don't think the three goes straight in. That's the problem. And even if it has a half a pocket, if you're not on there perfect, that half a pocket shrinks up to almost nothing. He's going to go cue ball right onto the three here. Takes a good hit. He's past it. Yeah. I'm not so sure that's what he wanted to do. Go by it, you mean, or go into well, it? Well, what way? he did. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think that. Yeah. I think he was thinking he was going to hit the three, move it forward. But, you know, this is a 5 by 10 with two quarter-inch balls six feet apart. So it takes a pretty yes, accurate hit. Well, I look for him to play some sort of safety here. I mean, the ball, you know, the three is straight in on the side, but then that's like you know, you gotta, on these tables you just can't you just can't take that chance. You got to roll it. And he's looking at it. Well, I mean, the safety's not assured. The filler's so good. He's going to hit it. Is this going to be your best scoring opportunity? That's what you have to weigh. Am I going to get a better shot this rack or not? It's, it's certainly makeable, and it's also very very missable. That seven's in play to get behind. No, he's not going to do that. I guess. Yeah. Wow. Well, I like that play. He knows he's in, he's in trouble. He needs to get some offense going. So it's a very nice shot, too, by the way. Wow, how about, how about position that. there? Yeah. <laughs> if he's got, it looks kind of straight on the overhead, but if he can get on this five now, that would be, uh, that would really start to get the momentum switched back his way if he well, can get out. Mark, after that shot he just made, I, I think these, the rest of these balls are like, you know, not yeah. a problem after what I just watched. Get another look here at the replay. Watch the cue ball. Straight up, straight back, and then straight back and straight in for position. Very nice. And complete mental commitment to that bank, too. He didn't kind of hope it in there. He, he hit the ball like he intended to make it for sure. Interesting, too. Uh, I always mention Peggy Lyon's one of the only guys that plays with his grip hand behind 90 degrees at impact. Most everybody is either in front of 90 degrees straight up and down with their grip hand or at 90 degrees, but he's one of the only guys that plays behind it. Mm. A little corner wobbler. But good speed. Yeah, he's. You can see he's kind of... Regain some composure here. Coming out two rails, it looks like. Just wants to get straight in on the nine ball. Side bucket. Okay. Now, like you said earlier, now a filler, the killer, is thinking in his mind, well, now this guy has just won two games in a row. He's not going to miss no more. You know, his nerves mm-hmm. are gone, so mm-hmm. I, I better make something mm-hmm. happen here. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Just a little doubt creeps into your head. 
especially when you're up six nothing. You're thinking this is going to be, you know, a walk in the park. And all of a sudden, uh, if Alice can win this game, he's cut the lead in half. Yeah, if, if Filler can maintain the pace that he played, it's going to beat anybody. There's no worries about that anyway. Uh, but you have to make him maintain that pace. Yeah. And, yeah. Like I said, it's not it's not how you start; it's how you finish in most all sports. Like some people come to the match and they want that good start, and then when they don't get it, then psychologically, then it's hard for them to be strong enough to persist because it didn't go the way they wanted to right off the bat. And sometimes, you know, how often would you say when you played, okay, how often would you say you play a set with your absolute A game only? What percentage? Uh, of your a very percentage? best percentage? Oh, my God. Dude. Not not very high of a percentage. Maybe no. 60, 65 percent, right? Oh. And then sometimes you have to win ugly and have your B game and your C game to, and but still fight on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying, yeah. You well, know, the great players usually they, they they can win without their best game. You know. What I'm yeah. Saying? Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. You have to be able to win ugly. You have to be able to steal a match from behind, or you can't right. win one of these big events because everybody in here is so darn good. You, just, you win go. wire to wire. You're not playing very good competition. See how he squared him up? Took a little pace off there. I don't think he's going to be rewarded. But no. Yeah. If he's straight in, that is not what you want to leave for sure. Let Filler get back in his rhythm. Well, the break is getting the best of these two players right now. It hasn't been that great for anybody. I don't know Van Boney, how did he do? He did pretty good on the break. Okay, he's going to play a little jump shot. Can't, can't use a jump cue, must use your own cue. That was a nice one. Yeah, very nice. This one here, looks like he might have to slow roll this ball. I don't like slow rolling balls like this. But he's going to try to spin it out and come down and get straight in. Is that what he's going to try to do? Miss the eight? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did he hit it? Or that not? is a pretty shot Look at that. right there. It, 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 it just Floated cleared right. the nine just by a millimeter. What a shot. He made a very nice shot there going in between the eight and the ten. You're not kidding. That was even more impressive than the jump shot. Yep. Oh, another, another very nice shot. Yeah, real good route there. Yeah. Now he has the angle to make it and then come straight back up, you know, by the nine up there. Yeah. So he's laying in pretty good position here. This is a little bit dicey here. If he wants to shoot that ball on the side, he's going to have to draw it, and the ball's frozen. I, I, I don't know if he would do that. He, he might either roll or just come one real straight back or go forward. Yeah, he's going forward. He didn't want to mess with any of that other stuff. Really good hit there, too. Mm -hmm. Not because of just the speed, but the direction, the angle. You have to hit that object ball really clean to get your speed control and your uh, position play route. Yes, you do. Good. So ball pocketing, you know, speed control is based on ball pocketing, too. Right. All right. Seven. Come out two rails. No, he's going for the side pocket. Okay. That way you don't get off angle. You get out there and get weird. All right. well, Killer. Can't question him. <laughs> well, he's playing, that's for sure. You have to do it in a hurry if you're going to. Super high quality performance thus far by Filler. Yeah, yes it is. He made that happen with that jump shot to start with and a great position play and then he took care of business uh, thereafter. But those first two shots, spectacular. To come here, it's, it's literally 940 some miles for me to drive out here, okay? Which is a good bit. Yes it is. If I could come and watch one match 
played, like Filler is playing right now, mm -hmm. and you said, Mark, you have to go home, I would be satisfied. To yeah, I mean, the, it's yeah. worth it to me to see because I know what this takes, especially on a 5x10 right. with ultra tight pockets. You say, well, it's got new cloth. Oh, go down there and hit a few balls. You'll see some hang up there that you wouldn't imagine hang. Exactly. Was it you and I doing the uh, Garcia match last night when it came uh, hill hill and there was mm -hmm. a combination on the ten? Yep. Remember that hung? Mm -hmm. That's always in on a nine footer. The ball that hung, that right. it wasn't even. It, we thought it was down here. We, exactly, it yeah. was remarkable. Seven to two. Filler. See, he's not hitting the break good. See the side spin on the cue ball, too? <laughs> but rolling Can you play, along. Safe? Can you play <laughs> safe off the break? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> rolling along. <laughs> That's probably the only thing he's did even a hint wrong, really, is uh, his break hasn't been that dynamic. He's made up for it with firepower. Yeah, nice. Alex going to tangle things up here. Let's let's have a tactical game then. If I have to push out. Well, if he can make this ball, he's most definitely going to shoot it. Because the cue ball is going to come straight back towards the two. Yeah, something that could work out here for filler. Oh, he did, couldn't even hit it. Then. Oh, he couldn't hit it. Yeah. Great shot. Look at this! Mm -hmm. Wow, a two rail kick and uh, manipulate the object ball and the cue ball simultaneously to get safe. That's yeah, he hit that awful well. He hit it full. That's what made the cue ball stop when he when he caught that ball coming up that second rail full. Yep. Cue ball has nowhere to go. It has to stop. And now he's just going to take a foul. <laughs> but now he's on two, right? No. no, no one no. thing. I might be looking at the one. combination here. To be honest with you, put the cue ball behind the seven. Play the combination in the side. Right, right. I mean, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just a thought. Well, the idea is that you're mainly playing cue ball here because no matter how you hit it, this is a tough combination. Mm -hmm. Now, no, oh, Josh is going three foul roll. I think he's going to try to put the one in between the two and the eight, and then get the cue ball down here where it's really tough, even if he leaves a, a kick. Needs to make sure and get fully behind that seven. Uh, he left the one real kick. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. not. He a... needed to get behind it. Oh, no, no I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Just, but this still, he's got to make a good shot. Yeah, but. He, he figures would, to hit if it. If he was behind it, then he would really be in trouble. He would be locked up. Yeah, he figured to hit this for sure. Needs a good slice of luck. Well, there you go. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good escape. I like Filler's thinking, though, because it's yeah. going to be tough to run this rack with that three and the five and the two and the six and the eight. And Behind the seven ball here. I guess that's the play. Oh, he's going all the way. I like this better. Even if it doesn't work out, it's mm -hmm. still. He, he was playing. I don't, well, I don't think it would have win. I think he was playing safe. But, yeah. Move the eight out of the way so the two will go. Wow. This guy, I'll tell you one thing. I know. Oh, man. I, yeah. You get you tied up in knots, you can't get out. He is a man of many faucets all turned on. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. I've watched, I've watched him play here. I, I've seen enough. Well, I mean, you've you know seen I mean? it, wow. one rack, Paggy Lyons had to take two intentional fouls. So that tells you all about what's going on here. This gentleman can really dab it. He's a young man, too. I know. When, when Suke told me that this guy's going to be the best uh, – German player, I was mildly offended because I always believe in Ralph so much, you know, and I thought, yeah. well, he's just blowing smoke, blah, blah, blah. And then plus, you know, Ralph is a hero, of course, yeah. so. 
Ralph's, and then, but by golly, maybe Ralph was right about this yeah, one. Yeah, and Ralph's a very humble person, too. Yep. That's why, you know, you have to love him. Well, I don't think this is quite what he was looking for when he made the one, but uh, you're going to just uh, try to go up table with the ball and get down here, trying to get behind that ball. Man. <laughs> Well, this is kind of an interesting shot here. I don't know if we can grab the overhead, but if we can, well, yeah, you can go rail first right before the side pocket and try to nip this because if you, well, if, if you dislodge the three, it's a problem. But yeah, soft speed, super soft. Yeah, you can't hit it very hard. It'll no. come back out and give, give him a shot. Half table speed, the speed. Just a, oh, he made it perfect. Very good. Perfect. Very heady play there. Little safety play going on. Well, now yeah. the scratch is on. If you hit the two direct, you're so you're gonna have to probably lightly kick at it. I think he's gonna kick up one rail. Yeah, well, two rails, and then you can get separation. You know, if you go one rail, you never get separation. Super soft. Yeah, how'd he do? No good. No. Oh, uh, close to good. Closer than I thought it was gonna be. Now we're going to see a chance for the three or foul rule come into effect. For you folks at home, it might be time to go to the refrigerator now. It looks like we have a well, this is more lot of little safety yeah. play going <laughs> no, on. No, it's not going to be long. Alex wants to he wants to wedge that in there, but he doesn't want a one rail route to hit the two. Alex might have to call it an extension if he's not careful. Well, that's all right if he has one. He does. He has. This will be the time to use it. So he's going to go. Here's what he wants to do. Can we grab the overhead here so I can show it? Okay. Well, anyway, he needs to lightly rub it and go three cushions around. Yep. Very good. All right. Uh, wow. Talk about a difficult position. Very, very difficult. If he hits this ball, I'll tell you what. If he hits this ball. No, foul. I don't think so. Two fouls. He's on two. It's awful hard to three foul a gentleman, too. In, in, any of these players, it's hard to three foul, especially on a, on right. a five by ten. Alex is looking like they're trying to pin it to the back of the four here, two cushions. If he can take the one rail kick away, coming back up table mm -hmm. where the where the ten is, then he he really will have him in a very difficult spot. Oh, he's not even going to travel the cue ball. Okay. Oh, he took there the one is. rail. He took it away. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> right, Josh see. shakes his head side to side. He knows this is brutal. This is brutal. Yeah, he's looking think, at a three rail route. I think maybe he can shoot. Can he shoot one rail? He can go off the point. Uh, he's going to try to go <laughs> two rounds. I don't know what you're looking at, but as soon as yeah. you say go off the point, I know that means that Alex hit a good shot. Yeah, not even close. Yeah, yeah that's how good that is. was. Yeah. Lost the game. Sure was. <laughs> as soon as Kim says, did he go off the point? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Okay, uh, here we go. I don't know what point you're talking about, but I know that's a good safety. Uh, side pocket point. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. But I just say. <laughs> a little wry smile on his face. Nothing you could do about that, and that's the billiard savvy of Peggy mm -hmm. Lyon. Yeah. The tactical side of the game. And the funny thing about that is, uh, well, it's not funny to filler, but it started out, he was trying to get Alex on two fouls. Yeah. You know, and then it just totally switched around. Yeah, it was an interesting game with those uh, clusters out there that makes the run out. You don't see it very often. Right. I thought he should have, when he had ball in hand, I thought he should have played the, the ball into the 10 ball and just put the cue ball behind the 7. That, that, that was just my opinion. It was a free shot. But, you know. Like I said, you can't question uh, his thinking, that's for sure. Or any of these players playing in this tournament. Greatest players in the world here in Norfolk. Right. Well, his competitive fire is not yet distinguished, so here we go. 
dude, he just needs to get somehow make a ball in the break. He just mm-hmm. needs to figure this out. I think he needs to hit him hard, as hard as he can. He did the same thing that he did the last break. He just puffed him. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's just uh, maybe he's just conceding the fact that he can't uh, he can't make a ball in the break. I mean, uh, I think he's done it one time. I think only one time. To, no, neither one of them hit the break. Yeah, Great. I mean, they're just kind of. I mean, the the first match w- uh, yesterday, they were they were making balls two side. You know, the two balls behind the one were going in the sides. I mean, but they were hitting them pretty hard. Yeah. Can he go underneath this in between the seven and, and the uh, one and catch the back row and stick it? Of course, he's just going to try to bring it straight back down table and try to get behind the three and the uh, four. Looks like he's playing that shot. Oh, oh, oh wow. what a gorgeous hit that was. My goodness. That's called stunning the ball there. What well, a shot. The speed, they have the spin mm-hmm. not released before it gets there, and then control the one. And that's phenomenal pool well, right what's there. What's the chances of filler getting three fouled back-to-back? <laughs> Is there any chance of that? It will. <laughs> remote. <laughs> I'm just asking. That will be remote. <laughs> uh, there you go. Well, that was a heck of a shot there. That's worthy of a replay. That one. That, that was, was really incredible. I mean, he hit it and he stunned it. <laughs> yeah, you have to hit it perfect. Look at this. How about right this speed. shot? All of a sudden. My goodness. I mean, Look at what this. a great shot. What a great shot. I mean, reminds me of stuff Ephraim used to do. And still does, I'm sure. Here we go. Here's that kick. Look at that. Warps it back in there with a little perfect. backspin. Nice speed. Couldn't have turned out better. No, that was that was phenomenal. He's gonna have to do a little masse here. I think maybe more than a little. No, he's taking a foul. Oh, <laughs> well, get a third what. intentional foul in two games. You don't want to bump that too hard. Oh. Yeah, I don't think you wanted to bump it up no. like that. Well, for sure, you're right about that. Because you can really, I mean, well, if you look leave at this. Combo, yeah, that's no yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a short rack. I mean, 8-10 it looks like. All the balls are spread out pretty good. He just has to maintain his position. Which he's really did that pretty well through the entire yeah. match. I mean, he shoots so straight that, I, you know, you can be off angle a little bit when you shoot as straight as he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. And supreme confidence, you know, I mean, this, well, he was like uh, 12 and 13, 14 years old, beating grown men in poor rooms, and, and they just couldn't imagine this kid could play at the speed, you know. Right. Oh, oh, not quite what he had in mind. I'm sure he's going to be fine, but uh, I think he would have liked to have been over just a little further. See, he's, no, he's yeah, now he's calculating now. Is he just going to bounce out two rails and miss the seven? He sure did. Very nice. Yeah. One thing about it. He should have, he has Joshua Filler on the back of his shirt. He should have Killer on there somewhere. <laughs> Probably is on there somewhere. Well, he is. Yeah, he double checking. He has to hit yeah. this thin. You yeah. can't just hack at it and get it. Yeah. He's almost looking at going rail first on it, in fact. The thing here, you don't want to undercut this ball. If anything, you want to overcut it. 
and it's kind of hard to do. It's kind of hard to overcut the way he is. Because well, that's he why he's looking at rail first. Yeah. See, he's looking at going rail first into it, and then you can't hardly mess it up if there's enough room to do that. Rather than go ball first. Yeah. Inside spin. Yeah. No. Careful. Yeah. That was the rail Very first good. shot, right? Yep. Yes, yep. Sure. Smart play. Boy, you know, when you, when you watch this, and, and here's a guy, he says, uh, how do you train? He says, well, I try to run 200 balls a day. And then the guy <laughs> yeah. says, how often do you do that? Every day. Well, now you can see. It is mm. possible. Uh, here we get our premier billiards replay, rail first. Blah, blah. And that takes away the possibility of hitting the fat. There you go. Just improve the percentage of success on that. Well, reaching this point for a filler means nothing without uh, final success here. So uh, he's had this match pretty well in hand. Something something uh, very unusual is going to have to happen for him to lose this match as good as he's playing. What a kick he made in that game to get that one ball. Man. Sure was. Wow. After Alex did such a great job, Alex hit maybe the best shot of the match to tuck that cue ball just a few inches over behind the ball from 10 feet away. And then Filler comes up with that great kick and then a nice clean run out. I think we're going to have one on the break here for you. <laughs> well, right. my odds are with me, right? I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I haven't been making no balls. So. I don't think he has much of a shot. No. But he's at the table. That's the main thing. You remember the time we were in Cleveland, Camel Tour event, and 10 ball, okay? Do you remember how many 10s went on the break that week up there? You remember, like, matches would go, Ooh. one guy would make three 10s on the break and win, and the other guy would make two 10s on the break? In Cleveland. Yeah. yeah Cleveland? Was, well, Were we at, was it, it wasn't Wisconsin, at Romine's place? Uh, that was nine ball up there, wasn't it? That Corey won when Earl walked out, that one. I, I'm... There was one tournament we played where it was a 10-ball, and the 10-ball won on the break, and it was unbelievable how many times they were going in. I don't think I played in that event. I might not have played. Okay, maybe not. You played in most of them, though. Can't yeah, imagine. oh, yeah. I yeah, can't imagine I you weren't there. You know, I mean, maybe I was, but yeah. so you're going back 20-plus, yeah. you, you know. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember all the tournaments I played in. <laughs> you can't? Even, I can't either. Even if I tried, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I just Alex remember this sticks out because of that one thing. I couldn't tell you much right. about it. I couldn't tell you who won it. I just remember there was a tournament where the, we were saying 10 balls is so much of a better game, and then, my goodness, the 10 was going in way more often than the 9 ever did. I remember we were at uh, the Dancing Bear from Canada. Yeah, I, that was wrong. He, he ran, he ran, I forget how many, I think he ran 10 racks or something. <laughs> Elaine Martel. Elaine Martel. I think he ran 10 racks. <laughs> the Dancing Bear. Yeah, that was a yeah, that was, uh, that was a, yeah, he was a bear. Of a he man. would move. He was a big man, and plus he would move around and like he was dancing when uh -huh. he was playing. Yeah, yeah. No, was he was fun. Good. He was a good player too. This guy. You, you know, yeah, you're right. You, you you had to really play to beat him. Please don't tell me he was playing that. Well, I think he might. Uh, no, uh, signal he wasn't. Up. I guess he was playing safe. Well, it looks like he's going to have to go into the rail here, rail first. He's going to have to manipulate the cue ball and not to run into the uh, nine here, so just to be careful. Oh, oh, no, he can see it. Evidently, the way he's shooting at it. Takes a big stroke here. No, oh, he, he tried to go rail it. first. Yeah. yeah. Draw it back. With he's got away with it, it looks like.
Nice kick and stick there. Or is it going to go in? It is. It didn't. Ooh. Oh, boy. This is ugly. If you have to kick one rail, side rail, it's so easy to follow it in. Jumping. A full ball jumping with a full cue. Wow. I have never been able to jump a full ball on Simonis with my cue. Yeah, I never was a great jumper of the ball. There's guys that can do it, jump a full ball with oh, their full yeah. cue, but I've never been one of those. I could do it with a jump cue, but I could never do it with my full cue. That Earl is the best i ever seen. Now, in the last 20 years or so, I haven't really watched <sighs> these guys play, but uh, Earl, could, Earl was doing it when nobody could do it. Here we get a look at the jump shot. Oh, Look it was just a gap. It wasn't a full ball. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was a gap. I, I yeah. thought he was going full ball, but that was a good look at it. It's still yeah. a great shot. I think it would have cleared anyway if it wasn't a full ball. That yeah. ball. It got up in the air pretty good, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. He hit nice. One rail. If he makes this position, staring him right in the face. Oh, double kiss. Sure did. Yeah, it was close to that anyway. Mm -hmm. No worse for wear, though. He left it tough. Yeah, he's come down. He's at 9.11 on his AccuStats. No, he was at, what, 9.62. It's just hard to keep that pace up, especially on a 5 by 10 What a nice shot that was from an ugly distribution and no matter what he gives up it's that's all he could do that was the highest percentage yield he chose to roll it rather than try to draw it over there behind the nine because mm -hmm. it was so dangerous and the speed that you'd have to put on the four ball was such that it would come back down table anyway try to knock the five up table i thought he was playing oh, the combo he oh he was i didn't think the combo would go i didn't think he had enough room to make that's what i meant He's not too happy with that shot, you can tell. And there's nothing for Alex to do here. There's no offense. It's, it is exactly what you don't want to face. You have to play a tough it, safety. It'll go, though, won't it? Does it? That looks I'm well. Thinking, I'm on the overhead. We can't tell. It looks like the six has his impeded. Tear him off the six. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, he was trying to make it. But evidently. it wasn't. Yeah, yeah evidently. It might not have went. He hit it pretty good, too, but uh, uh, it looked like the six had him pinned to the rail where it wouldn't go. My good friend Dallas West, one time I was watching him, and he, he played a shot that wouldn't go, but <laughs> he hit it with commitment, though. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was, I don't know, he wasn't frustrated. It was just like he just wanted it to go so bad that he just overlooked the fact that it wouldn't go. Dallas West, he used to lay his tip on the cloth and oh, draw yeah. it. Yeah. And that was really impressive. Yeah. Really, really impressive. He grew up around the Rockford pool scene that was really a high-level pool scene. So as a kid, he was watching, you know, Moscone would routinely come once a year, train, uh -huh. and guys like that. It was a, just a fascinating place to be. Back yeah. then, you could make a living as a houseman in the pool room. I asked the houseman there, I go, I bet you've seen Dallas run 100 balls on a lot of these tables probably. Huh? And the guy goes, I've seen him run 100 on every one of these tables. There's about 20 tables there. I said, right. oh. And then as an afterthought, a couple of minutes later, he looked at me and goes, I've seen him run 200 on half of them. <laughs> and he wasn't exaggerating. I go, okay. I certainly believe that too. Dallas twice ran 400 balls. Oh, it's a great player. Oh, yeah. Won two U.S. Open straight pools. Yeah, filler carving through these racks now. Yeah. I don't know what Pagulian could have done with the object ball that he tried to make that wouldn't go. I don't know what he could have done better because even yeah. if you kick at it, there's nothing much there. But uh, looked like he shot at something that wasn't there. The other part of it is that, you know, Kim and I are probably, I'd say, a good 30 feet from the table. And then a lot of times the angles that they see down there are quite a bit different than what we see up here. 
Yes. And yes. I'm going off the overhead, but it did look like the six had that object ball pinned to the rail. I think it was the four ball. Over the course of your career, who would you say was your toughest guy that you played? Oh, Nick Varner. Nick Varner? Yeah, we played in the finals several, I think maybe six times. I think I beat him once. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't feel bad. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the same. Toughest. Yeah, he was, uh, and you definitely could have won, but yeah, you didn't. You know what I mean? He, he, was, my, he was tough. He yeah. is. Boy, he does not quit. He's got a lot of pagulion in him. He sure does. He will, he will learn to win ugly. Uh, One time I was doing the broadcast with Sukay, and, uh, and I said... Uh, no, he was playing. He was playing Efren. And I said, "What do you think your career record against Efren is?" And he said, "You know, I have a remarkable record." He says, "I, I think I'm I'm 12 and four win." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Really?" And because uh, I'd never heard anyone that had a great record against Efren, and this is back in Efren's prime. I'm talking about. And he goes, "You know, for as good as my record is against Efren, do you know that my record against Bustamani is worse? You know, the other right. way. You know, I'm like three and 11 against Bustamani. I'm." 12 and 4 against Efren. And then it was, if you take Bustamani's record against Efren, Efren, Efren just dominated Bustamani. So the three of them together all had, <laughs> it was just a weird circumstance of great players. That Oh, yeah, when you get two great players playing with each other, it, it can go lopsided. A lot mm -hmm. of times it's no. just, you know, back and forth, one, 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 you know, but it can, it can get a little lopsided. It's not that the other guy plays bad. The other guy just can play those many sets in a row that are just freaking killer. Yeah. glance at the 710. I think he'd rather just get across the table and just run out rather than fool with a combination that's off angle. Yeah, I don't think you'll play no combo here. And now you might have to play two this balls. Is... Play, oh, I... play the 7 and yeah. the 10. <laughs> well, he's not very happy with himself. Need to roll down another foot anyway. I, I think if you make the seven, the ten goes fat. So if you're going to play the ten, then you have to go thin on the seven. He might make them both right here. Yeah. Oh, he did. Boy, he even overcut the ten. I thought it'd be the other way. So. Okay. Good shot. Yeah, and that was a good follow-up shot right yeah. there. That's one of those that's easy to miss. It's a good run out right there with the score being 9-3, to three, you know, racing to 10. I mean, it's, e it's easy to just give up from the, from this position, but Alex uh, has none of that in him. So. <laughs> Hall of Fame players don't give up. You know, exactly. Lesser players do, but <laughs> Hall of Fame players don't. <laughs> Nine four is our score, and that, you know, for as poorly as things have gone for Alex, you can see that he's got some fight left in him. Right, right. Early in your pool career, who would you credit as an influence or a positive force that really inspired you, mm. helped you, guided you? 
Well, I didn't really have any kind of coach or guidance or anything. I, I tell you what, I I seen uh, Jim Rimpy play in uh, Sacramento, and I think it was 1977. I was a pretty young, well, I was about 21, 22, and uh, I really liked him. I, lo- I, I, you know, he was kind of my idol, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then after I, you know, some uh, 20, 20 years later, uh, I, I played him in the finals and, and beat him in a tournament, uh, yeah, the Field Eastern Drake. States Nine Ball Championship, and that, that was like self gratifying, yeah. you know. Yeah. You look up to somebody like that, and then you play him in the finals and beat him. So. He had every aspect of professionalism, his attire, his uh, yeah. the way he carried himself, his attitude, everything about it yeah. was good. Yes, it was. And so he would be a great role model. And I always kind of feel like he kind of got shortchanged. He played in the Siegel and Buddy Hall era, mm-hmm. and people don't recognize what kind of talent he was. Yeah, Jimmy won a lot of tournaments. Oh, I know, I know, Especially but you never hear people 70s. talk about him. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it, it's well, it's, it seemed like to me, it seemed like the kids nowadays, I say the kids, just people now, they, they, they seem, it seems like history doesn't matter to them at all, you know what I mean? They're yeah. Like just focused on what's happening today and, yeah, you know. So, yeah, uh, Alex is feeling uh, hopelessness and helplessness right here. There's nothing he can do. And if you play professional pocket billiards... Uh, it's going to happen to you no matter how great you are. Oh, you're going to get bruised and battered along the way. But sometimes I'll be doing the broadcast with Danny DiLiberto. And he doesn't sugarcoat it or anything. It's not really the best thing to sell our sport, but they go like this. You know, in pool, there's a lot of suffering. <laughs> you know, hmm. it's kind of true. It's kind of oh, funny. Yeah. Danny. Well, especially you don't him. have any teammates to go to and console no. you. You know, I mean, you're out there on your own. It's, you know. It's very difficult in a gladiator sport, just one on one, you know. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to fall. He used every bit of that pocket, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I think this is the only shot that he needs to uh, navigate here, and he should be just fine. Gliding along here. Mm hmm. A little thin. Yeah, he would like to come out a little further there, but I think he'll just throw it past the side up there. A lot of spin. Super long bridge. Yeah, he comes short of the side. Golly, okay. he peered that mm-hmm. ball in there, man. Made it look effortless. I was thinking it was a little tougher than what he made it look. Well, this has been a wonderful match. Uh, I've enjoyed it. This is the first time I've seen him play live, and I'll tell you what, it's very impressive. Yeah, what is it, 9.30 is TPA, 9.26? Yeah, right it might be right at 9.30, 9.28. Match ball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well deserved. A little too much filler here. There's nothing much to say. It was a high-quality performance. You don't see uh, north of 900 in the 5x10 that often, so really good. On behalf of AccuStats, Kim Davenport, and myself, we want to thank you for sharing your time today. Please join us again. So long for just a while.